Okay, today we're at uh, Donington Park in England. It's a two and a half mile, 12 turn road course. And here we are leading onto the front straightaway here. The line is right uh, there, I think, or here. Um, we got a kind of a fast course here. A little bit of a tricky turn one sort of tightens as towards the exit a little bit. So you got to sort of uh, get most of your turning done pretty quickly. Get some undulation through here. It's a little bit blind to come to this turn here. This turn is quite tricky. You got to be on the brake hard, then back off the brake. We missed the apex quite a bit there. You can run pretty wide out here, um, but it can also catch you out. Uh, try to get the car turned. You can use some of the curbing into, into here on the left side. This turn is also quite tricky. Uh, you got to get on the brakes kind of hard and then sort of wait long enough and then get back on the throttle. It's tempting to get back on the throttle too early and then you run a little too wide there. Uh, this turn we're coming up on is also a bit difficult because it's sort of a blind apex. You know the turn is there, but you can't quite see where the apex is until you're basically already on top of it. And then you have a long, uh, fast exit here. So try not to scrub off too much speed with the front tires. Um, it's a little bit tricky. And you have a um, chicane here, which is also a bit tricky. The difficult thing here is a uh, um, reference point. There's not really a good one. Uh, it, so it's somewhere between these two signs, which is a huge area. And the road is kind of undulating, but basically there's nothing really here to pick up to use as a good braking marker, at least not that I've found, um, which makes it this turn a little bit hard to be consistent through. So what you want to do here is you want to keep it as close to the inside here as you can and not hit that uh, those little pylons. And then you can almost run through these pylons here. Um, but if you take too much, if you actually do go through the pylons, uh, that'll be an off track. So uh, you want to kind of keep the car as straight as you can through that, that chicane, that left, right. Coming up over a bit of a rise here. And then again, kind of tricky um, because there's not really a good braking marker again. Uh, I kind of use where I can sort of see all the road in front of me because you're coming up over a rise, so you're kind of a little bit blind. But when you can sort of see the road as flat is about when I start to get on the brake, but it's not the best, it's not the most consistent kind of marker. And we're going into a very tight hairpin. Um, so you need to trail a brake. You need to be still on the brake as you go in. And so we'll go, we'll go a uh, quarter speed um, through here. So I'm still on the brake as I turn in starting to turn in more, starting to turn in more, still on the brake, fading off the brake a little bit, a little bit more. You can definitely see we missed the apex a bit, or we're going to late apex it actually here. Um, and you got to get on the throttle really smoothly to not have wheel spin coming out of here. Wheel spin coming out of here is, is the thing that's going to kill your time a lot. And also missing that apex, which is really easy to do, kills your time a ton. You can easily lose half a second in that one turn alone taking that that wrong um this one is finally one that's not quite as tricky uh the braking marker i use is this this rubber mark here on the white line and it's kind of a blind entry again and late apex this one so we're going to come close to the curb on exit we're going to be over this turn or that's where we should be so I was too wide on exit here. Carry as much speed as possible, getting back on the throttle smoothly, using all the road. Again, not to uh, have a lot of wheel spin on exit, which will lose you time. Uh, so that's it. That's a lap. That's the challenge. And uh, let's jump to the race. Uh, so we qualified uh, fifth, it looks like, uh, out of about, I think, 12, um, let's see, 14 cars. Uh, so all right, let's get to the race.
And we're off. So let's go ahead and jump back. Track temp is 77 Fahrenheit. Let's watch this from uh, Chase View here. Maybe Far Chase. Um, all right, so we got a we got a good launch, great launch. So where does this go wrong? So we're way too far left here. We should be basically over this uh, kind of uh, stain on the asphalt here where the leader is and we're way too far to the right. And so I'm breaking here when I kind of, I definitely shouldn't be breaking yet, uh, but I know I'm not on a good line because I messed up this previous entry. Um, this is a blind, It's a blind apex coming here, and I don't know, cold tires, excited. I just missed it here. So we start sliding. You can hear the tires sliding. We're, we're, I got the wheel turned, but the car is not really turning. The front tires are sliding. Now I lock up a little bit on, on entry. So I'm, I'm locking up. I didn't get as far left as I needed to be. Now I have to make a tighter turn. I'm on the brake uh, a little harder and a little later than I really want to be. And the tires are still not gripping. I got the wheel turned a lot. I'm off the throttle. I'm still on the brake a little bit. And the front is just not gripping. And so I go through the grass. Try not to panic. Watching the mirrors. Try to stay as out of the way to not get collected. And lost a bunch of spots. So we lost all the ground we made up on the start and more. We qualified fifth. We're up into second, and now we're back into, like, sixth. So, not great, but... You guys getting into it a little bit there? Coming into that hairpin, that first hairpin. Going through the second hairpin onto the front straight. Using all the track and more a little bit. So at this point, we're back to fifth. Definitely lost time getting in there until the cars behind me made up a lot of ground. I kind of lifted a bit for the car in front of me. I wasn't quite sure what he was going to do. And the car behind me definitely pounced. And the one behind him, the five car, is definitely looking to pounce as well. I'm running a bit of defensive line here. Staying a little bit to the inside. To discourage the car behind me from trying to make a move. He goes for the move anyway. I see him in the mirrors. I kind of didn't want to put his three wide uh, right there heading into a hairpin turn. It just seemed like a recipe for disaster, so I backed out of it. But challenging right back on the next hairpin. Took a tighter line through there. He's trying to decide 
So you want to go inside or outside? I'm just keeping steady. I saw he was coming up the inside, so I had to give some room there. It's difficult running side by side. You got to sort of uh, adjust your braking and your throttle because you don't have full use of the track. The track basically just gets a bit narrower for you. So finally he was, uh, I had the inside on him going through that turn and he didn't adjust his line correctly and his braking correctly and uh, outbraked himself. Heading out of the front straight here. That was probably my best time through that turn there. That was good. You can see the car behind us getting a little racy. He's getting a little closer. He, I definitely went a little defensive that 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 run through there. I feel like he might take a a, a chance at it. So I kept slightly more defensive line. Again here, leaving a little bit of room to the to the outside. Just to kind of uh, make my car a little wider. Missed the apex quite a bit there. I didn't want to spin it though. Uh, I didn't want to risk spinning it. So I had to take a wider line. So let's back that up. So I, I, I screwed up my... Um, braking. I think I probably left my braking a little bit late. And maybe we can look at this from far chase. We'll go half speed. Uh, I left my braking a little bit too late and was sliding the front end. So I didn't get the car turned nearly early enough. And so I'm way farther wide, wider than I should be. The seven has the right line through here. So now I'm keeping to the left a bit. You can see it up here. And normally I'd swing all the way to the right. But I know he's there. But also, I don't want to give him the chance to switch lines and come to my inside. So I stay a little bit to the left. Try to hit my marks good through here. And then have a great exit through here so he can't get me on the exit is the, the idea. Uh, he makes up some ground on exit. But now I stay to the right side of the track here again defensive line going towards the next turn so if he's going to make the pass he's got to go the long way around he's got to go down the left around the outside and make the pass which is what he's working on here so that's that's a defensive line I'm not blocking, I'm not moving to um, cut off a move that he's making. I realize I didn't have a great exit, and so I took a line that's going to be defensive going into the next turn. So 
some some series, some real life racing series, define blocking as making two defensive moves, like moving to the inside and then moving to the outside, or vice versa. Um, it's a different way to think about it. So you could also see right there is a good um let's see if I can get to it. You can see how close we are to the grass right there. So using all the track, trying to get the widest line coming in, so like there's the white painted part and there's the grass. So we're trying to use all that, and this is at uh, 88 miles an hour under braking. That's it's difficult to be that close to the edge, but that's the idea of you want to get right to the edge of the track so you can give yourself the widest entry to carry the most speed through there. So you come from the far edge of the track all the way to the apex um, over the curb, hopefully um, on the inside to use to carry the, the most speed, making that corner as um, kind of as wide as possible. You could think of the opposite. If we were on the very inside here, we'd have to turn the wheel a lot more to make that turn. So we're trying to turn the wheel the least amount, carry the most amount of speed through the turn. And try to use all the curb on the inside. And then if you carried enough speed, you'd have to use all the curb on the exit. Way too far on the grass on that. I, I definitely picked up a um, off track incident for this. Uh, we're just way too far to the um, <laughs> to the inside here. Uh, tires fully on the grass. If I'd had these tires a little bit on the track, it would have been okay. Uh, but I was a little too aggressive there. Again, checking the mirrors a little bit to see if he's going to make the move, uh, trying to dive under braking, but it's really not a good place to pass coming through the chicane. There's not enough room to fit two cars through there uh, side by side. So you got to see if they're going to try to make the move, but it's not a smart place to make the move. But you got to check to see, are they going to wreck us both by, by doing it? Because if they are, then, you know, maybe you lift and let them through and live to fight another day. So at this point, we're still running in fifth. Uh, there's a bit of a gap to the cars in front of us. They're about five seconds up the road to the car in fourth. Trying to find a good angle here. It 
seven car behind me is definitely trying to make a make a run of it here. So I saw him swing out, saw it in the mirrors. So he's definitely going to make a move here. We've been trying to get get closer, definitely on this lap. I figure he's got it. I saw him shoot up the inside, so, you know, it's not much you can do. Give him a space and then try to battle back. Not giving him space just means we're going to wreck for sure because he's already committed. Now just drafting him down the front straight and ducking out. And was able to pull off the move there. So this is difficult to defend against. <clears throat> so I'm drafting down the, uh, the front straight here. to the onboard. Uh, so we're drafting down the front straight here. And he doesn't know. Are we going to make the move? Or are we going to stay behind him? Uh, he can't know. He could take a slightly more defensive line going into the turn, but then that compromises his line. He's carrying a bit, little bit less speed through there. Uh, he, basically, he's going through there more slowly. So as we get closer... It looks like he is just going to take the normal racing line. He's going to swing from the far left towards the inside. And so I, I'm i close. Some might say not quite close enough, but I'm close. And I see what he's going to do. He's basically committed at this point. And so I decide, okay, I'm at least going to put it side by side with him going into the turn. And then we'll see what happens. So let's go quarter speed. So he goes ahead and goes for the normal racing line, gets on the brakes where it normally does. Uh, and I decide to go to the inside, got to get my braking done, but now he's compromised. He can't come all the way to this inside because he saw me in his mirror uh, hold to the inside. He knows I'm no longer right behind him, so he knows he can't come all the way to the inside of the track. He's got to get a little more braking done now because he doesn't have uh, as wide of a line going through here. So now he's got to get a little bit more braking done, and we're going through. So I'm up on the curb, kind of controlling a little bit of a slide there, uh, counter steering into it. And then uh, I got to leave room to my outside because I know he's still there. Uh, and he has to get on the throttle a little bit later than he normally would. So now we got the pass done. So let's move back to his car. Oops, wrong way. So here's from his view. He can't see the, the apex of this next little bend right here that well because our car is blocking it, and so he's still turning right. Uh, I can see it well, uh, but from his view, he can't. And so he basically drives off on the grass a little bit here. It doesn't slow him down too much, though. But this is part of the difficulty of driving right behind somebody else. The closer you are, the more of your view gets blocked. And he's got a car on his butt now. You can see in the mirror there's another car challenging coming up there. Um, let's switch cameras, make it a little easier to see. So he's got the five car kind of dancing around in his mirrors. I think that was third place telling fourth place keep trying you can catch up to us something like that um,
during the week, a lot of the guys are using these this race for practice um, for the bigger race on the weekend with more cars. Because you can practice on your own, uh, which is good. Uh, but practicing with other cars, having your view blocked, learning alternate uh, lines, um, alternate braking points to use when your view is blocked. That five car took it up the inside, did a good job there. I slid the front tires to there, missed the apex, lost a bunch of time, um, lost probably three or four car lengths uh, to the car behind me there. I could hear it. I locked it up on under braking, just sliding those front tires. Sliding again, slide the front tires. Can hear it a bit. The five car gets a uh, gets to the inside. I try to hang tough on the outside. Try to keep the momentum up. And let's back that up a little bit. So. on board here we'll do this half speed so we're coming through here trying to keep the momentum up on the outside and you want to get to the right as you come up towards the next turn and so i couldn't really see him in my mirrors um because he's kind of in that blind spot right there and i didn't really want to turn my head because i feel like i turn the wheel a little bit if i turn my head in vr um and so i thought we should be start going to the right a little bit and uh So I'm slow. I'm trying to be really gentle about it, of slowly drifting to the right. Um, but it looks like for some reason he started going to the left a little bit. So we almost collided, or we did maybe collide right here for a split second. Uh, definitely unintentional, but I felt like he came into me, and he he probably felt that that I came into him. Uh, but it was just incidental contact there. So now we're headed towards that uh, chicane. So I was able to get the spot back. But now he's going to have a, he's close enough to have a great uh, shot going into the hairpin here. I could have been a little more defensive there. But he would have, I think, still been able to get around me around the outside. He just had more momentum. And again, we had a little bit of a bump there. This one, this one I was like surprised by because I knew he was to my inside here. Um, coming through here. And again, we want to move to the right for the next turn. And so I'm slowly drifting to the right. Why he would be coming from the right side to the left side when the entry appears, you want to be on the right side of the track seemed kind of strange to me um let's look at it from his tracing following his view yeah he, he turns ever so slightly but to left when if anything he wants to be going to the right it seemed very odd to me um so i don't know if this was intentional or not i felt like it was intentional in the moment um even though it was just a uh, zero x no no incident point I just wasn't sure if it was some kind of intimidation or something. Uh, so our braking markers over here, this rubber mark on the white line, 
but obviously we can't see it because we're, our view is blocked by his car being here. So he can see it, but we can't see it. So I'm just kind of guessing about where it is. Plus I need to sort of back it up a little bit because I don't have as wide of an entry. I'm not coming from this outside line to the inside. So I need to actually break a tiny bit before a normal breaking line to still get the breaking done. So uh, this is kind of the, 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 the trick sort of skill involved of knowing these things, having them memorized, and then adjusting on the fly to back it up. So we'll see. Yeah, we still break right about at the rubber mark there. Uh, you just got to get a little bit more breaking done. And so when I say a little bit more breaking done, uh, let's look at that more closely. Let's watch the breaking meter. Let's see where it peaks at. So we're at about 90% breaking. Uh, pretty hard under breaking here. Yeah, I was at 90% for quite a bit there, 95%. Um, so that's the, that's the difficulty. It's getting that breaking done and not locking up. And then figuring out how much, if any, space you have to leave them on exit. Did you beat them through the turn? Did you beat them on exit? Uh, how much space do you have to leave on exit? And so let's see. We basically had them on entry. Um, so I could run all the way wide. Didn't really need to. Um, all right. So here we go again. I'm keeping a bit of a defensive line. He went way to the inside. So then I moved over to the racing line. And now the situation's kind of reversed from uh, when I was trying to pull this move off on the seven car. And again, you see a little bit of a bump there. Let's look at this one again. Let's look at this one. Uh, so we'll go slow motion here. So we're coming up on a right hand turn here. And you, you want to already be, uh, you don't need to break for this turn. So you need to already be pulling into it, pulling to the right to, to, to get there. And so he's on the inside. Yeah, so I think, I don't know, this is probably a little bit more on me. Uh, I'm kind of following the racing line kind of as if he wasn't there. And he's out of position. So he's trying to go a little bit further left to then come right. But at the moment, in the moment, it just felt like... Uh, is kind of uh, sort of trying to push me around or something is what it kind of felt like. Which, you know, is sort of the case. I think watching it. Yeah. Now he's out of position for this turn. He's way out of position. You really want to be over this stain in the in the asphalt to and get your braking done. And he's way over here with the car angled kind of the wrong way. Um, so trying to cut hard back across here. Um, and we spin it. So let's back that up again. Let's look at that. So let's go in car. So the cockpit view at full speed. So, I probably braked a little bit more for this left-hander that we just went through right here, this one, uh, than I needed to. But it's unclear how much he's going to come in, uh, turn in, you know, kind of in front of us or right next to us, how close that's going to be. So I don't want to be carrying too much speed and running too wide out here. Uh, so... Now he has a little bit more sort of space in front of us. But then if you watch uh, how quickly he swings to the left right in front of us. So he probably hears in his radio right now, like clear. He's clear to left. So he swings all the way hard to left and jams on the brakes uh, fully, 
let's look at win and the break percentages. So he swings right here, and we're on the break like 90-ish percent. Uh, so I, don't know, I felt like this was, you know, a, a bit late and a bit dangerous to be pulling right in front, but that's what happened. So I was doing everything I could right there not to just not to run in the back of him because I, I, I was surprised that he would yank that right in front of us. Uh, but to get through this next turn, it would have been hard to go through side by side. So I get the point. Now my vision is a little bit blocked. And I had screwed up my entry a bit just having to react to the car in front of me. And so I have the wheel turned. The front end is sliding. You can kind of hear the tires. So the problem here, I still have the wheel turned. I needed to have the wheel straightened out and back off the throttle a bit because we're out past the edge of the track. We're getting into the dirt. This is kind of like a, I don't know, dirt creed or whatever they call it. Uh, has definitely has some grip, uh, but it's it, it starts going away as you get closer to the edge of it. So not having the wheel straight and still being on full throttle. If I would have had the wheel straight and backed off to 90%, I think I'd have saved this. Um, but let's do this in slow motion. I turned a little bit late in correcting it. And so didn't, didn't correct this in time. I turn it here, but I'm still not lifting off the throttle. I need to be off the throttle. It's too late. It's already gone. I'm trying to counter steer it, trying to lift out of the throttle, but now I'm out of throttle too much. It's already gone. Uh, so. That was my fault completely. Uh, but it's a good lesson. I think if you can't you can't go too wide, you gotta hit that turn good. Uh, and if you do go off right there, you gotta lift a little more than I did. So uh, it's something good to learn, and that's what you won't learn too too well in in practice. You gotta racing with other cars, having your vision blocked. Um, it helps you learn those things. Because maybe there's a different breaking point I could have used, or I should have learned that, that the risk reward on on carrying more speed into that turn is not worth it because you can lose it at high speed. So maybe entering that turn, getting a little more braking done before going in, and having a good exit is better than trying to gain a, another tenth on the way in, um, because the penalty is so high. I lost maybe ten seconds. Uh, to those cars in front of me on that mistake. So maybe losing a 10th on the way in and exiting safely uh, is would have been better. So that's what I would try to learn from it. Uh, we're on lap 11 of uh, 15. Let's go ahead and jump, see what's going on with other people here. Oops, wrong message, wrong button. Uh, let's see if we can jump through to other issues here. Uh, I've looped it on the first hairpin. Let's see if there's any other issues. Uh, Craig's good. Um, I think uh, he's just practicing, trying to learn the track for the weekend. Let's see if there's any other issues to jump to. Looks like that might have been it for the race. Uh, cool. Thanks for watching. We ended up finishing in uh, eighth place. We started fifth, finished eighth. Um, and let's see what our laps look like. I'm going to have to back up a couple laps here. Uh, switch around. There we go. So we qualified at a 143.259. And in the race, we were running all over the place, pretty inconsistent. 
uh, anywhere from a 142.573 to a 145.710. And then uh, where I spun was on lap 10. That was a 156. So we lost 11 to 13 seconds uh, compared to a normal lap. Um, so yeah, got to get more consistent. And uh, cool. That's it. Thanks for watching.